Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're gonna talk about buying call options. And this video is the second video in a series of videos I'm making on trading options. I will include the entire playlist down below in the event you wanna watch these videos in order. But just a quick recap, an option is a contract between two parties, the buyer and the seller. And you get to choose if you wanna be the buyer or if you wanna be the seller. And these two people have contrarian opinions. One person thinks the stock price is going up, the other one thinks the stock price is going down. And if you buy the call option, you're bullish, you think it's going up. If you buy the put option, then you're bearish, you think it's going down. The seller obviously has the opposite opinion of the buyer. And when the buyer buys a call option, they're given the right to buy a stock from the seller at a certain price, the strike price, by a certain time, the expiration date. And for this uh, right, they're paying the premium. They're paying a certain amount of money. So the seller is being paid. They're being paid the premium and they now have the obligation to sell stock to this person at the strike price at the expiration date. That's why they're getting paid. Now for this video, let's do a real world example and talk about Starbucks stock. I know Starbucks is currently at $104.76, but let's just go ahead and pretend it's an even 104. That will make the numbers examples a lot easier. So when examining Starbucks stock price, you can look at the chart and it, it's in a clear upward trend. It's very easy to look at this chart and say, wow, Starbucks price is rising. I think over the next month or two, it's gonna continue going up. I'm bullish on this stock. However, when you look at Starbucks fundamentals, their P to E ratio is 133. Their forward PDE is still 30, which is kind of high. It's very easy to say we're still in a pandemic. A lot of these stores are still closed in the near term. I don't think Starbucks is gonna be as profitable as they could be if all their stores were fully open. So it's very easy to look at Starbucks stock and have two different opinions. One person saying it's gonna go up and one person saying it's gonna go down. So you can easily have uh, somebody buy a call option and another person sell them that call option. So when you log on to your brokerage account, maybe you're with Fidelity, Vanguard, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, Webull, whatever, <clears throat> you're gonna see an option chain. And this is what the option chain looks like on Charles Schwab, just because this is what I use. Now there's a lot of information here, and in order to simplify it, you can switch these from uh, strategy, just, just, just look at the calls. So you can eliminate the puts, the puts are over here, you don't really need to see this right now. So switch this to call. For expiration date, switch it to just the dates you want to buy in the future. And then only look at the closest eight strike prices to the current share price. Okay, now we've simplified it and this is what it looks like. The current share price of Starbucks, we're gonna pretend is an even $104 per share. And we want to buy a call option for a strike price of $100. Now this is in the money. What, what, is, what does that mean? Well, first let's, uh, let's think about it. Where would you rather buy stock? Would you rather buy it from this person for $100 a share, or would you rather buy it on the New York Stock Exchange for its public share price of $104 per share? You always want to buy at the cheaper place. So let's think about the math of what this is costing you. If you can get 100 shares of Starbucks at $100, you're only paying $10,000 if you exercise this contract. Whereas if you were to go on the New York Stock Exchange and do a market order, this would cost you $10,400. So it's $400 cheaper if you can exercise this contract than what the current share price is. Seems like a pretty good deal. But as the buyer of a call option, you have to pay someone for the right to, uh, to buy their shares from them at this agreed upon price. What are you paying for this right to save $400? This is where you have to look at the bid and the ask price. Remember, buyers of the contracts are bidding, sellers of the contract are asking for a certain price. And you're seeing $6.45, that is per share. Contracts are always 100 shares per contract. So <clears throat> the cost of this $100 strike price on February 19th is $645. That's what the current uh, buy bid is. 
the seller is asking 665 so the last agreed upon sale was at 650 uh, this this is the spread but between what the buyers and sellers are asking that's called the spread if you do a market order as a buyer, you're going to go immediately to the asker's price. If you do a market order as an asker, you'll immediately go to the, uh, the bidder's price. So a lot of people will just pick the difference uh, and they think that's the fair price in order to be paying for the contract. So now think about this. You're paying $665 uh, for the ability to exercise this contract and you would only be saving $400 by doing this. So what are you losing? You're net losing $265. Just buying this option contract and the money is not going to save you money because you had to pay for the right to have the contract in the first place. So what needs to happen? You need that share price to go up. When you bought the call option, you were bullish. You think the stock price is going up. So what if over the next 44 days, Star uh, Starbucks's stock price goes up to 110? Well, let's, uh, let's do the math and let's assume that you did a market order and you just took the seller's ask price. You, you paid $665 for the contract. Okay, so the share price uh, went up to 110. So the fair market value uh, on the New York Stock Exchange, it's now saying at 110, 100 shares, uh, this, this 100 shares is worth $11,000 but you get to buy it from this person in 44 days, uh, you're in the future now, for $10,000. So you paid 665 for this contract and the share price rose. There's a, now, it's, it's now worth $1,000 more on the New York Stock Exchange than what you're paying for it from this person. So the price difference, uh, well, the, the market value difference minus the premium you had to pay for this contract equals your profit. So you made $335 if you were right and the share price of the call contract uh, of the share price of Starbucks continued going up over time. This is why people get really excited about options. This is why they really like it because it's capital efficiency. You're leveraging your money. By buying one contract, you're controlling 100 shares of stock. So for a $665 investment, you yielded a $335 profit over a 44-day period. That is a 50% increase or a 50% return on your money. But what if you were wrong? What if the share price of Starbucks dropped? It went down over the next 44 days and it went down to $95. Well, would you rather pay somebody $10,000 for 100 shares of stock, or would you rather just go on the New York Stock Exchange and pay $9,500? You always go with the cheaper deal, right? So you paid $665 for the contract. Because the price fell down, it's now out of the money. The contract is worthless. You would never exercise it. So what did you lose? You lost $665. This was your investment to purchase the contract and you lost everything. This was a 100% loss. The equivalency of this is buying $665 worth of stock. The company goes bankrupt. The stock price goes to zero. You lost everything. So buying call options is a very high risk, high reward scenario. You could potentially make 100%, 200%, 300% of your money, or you could lose everything, a 100% loss. Now you are capped, thankfully, you're maxed out. The most you can lose is the price of the premium, but once again, that's a 100% loss. And before we continue, uh, I'm, I'm gonna talk more about buying and selling put contracts in a future video, but I want you to know there's a very low probability of success when buying uh, call options. The vast majority of, uh, of purchased call and put contracts expire worthless out of the money. I just wanna make that uh, clear, crystal clear in uh, this video at this time. And the reason why so many option contracts fail for the buyers is because options are a wasting asset. They decay uh, over time. What does that mean? Well, let's think about uh, two different scenarios. So in, in the first scenario that we were doing, uh, we're, we're doing an expiration date of February 19th for a strike price of $100. So the buyers are bidding 645, the sellers are asking 665. But what if we do a expiration date closer to, to today's date? Let's look at the expiration dates for January 15th. So this is only nine days in the future. 
the strike price is the same, but buyers are bidding $4.95 and sellers are asking for $5.10. Why are, are the sellers uh, getting more money, the buyers are bidding more money, they're, they're paying more for a contract that expires in 44 days versus a contract that expires in nine days when the, uh, the strike price is the same, right? The reason why is because you're paying a higher amount for extrinsic value. Let's talk now about intrinsic value of contracts and extrinsic value. Intrinsic value is just um, the, the price difference, and extrinsic value uh, is made up of time value and implied volatility. So to think about this, let's just assume that you bought the 100-day uh, strike price for February 19th, and you went with the seller's ask of 665. So what is the intrinsic value? It is the difference between the current share price so on the New York Stock Exchange, it's going for 104, and the strike price, 100. So the intrinsic value is fixed. You know exactly what it is. It's $400. So what the heck is uh, the intrinsic value? Well, it's the difference between what, what you're paying for the contract, what the sellers want, and what it's worth as far as its intrinsic value. So the intrinsic value, we know this, it's 400. Extrinsic value is the difference, 265. What the heck is extrinsic value? And the way I like to think of it is its potential. It's potential for what this crazy stock could do over time. You know, when you have an expiration date 44 days in the future, that is a lot of time that newsworthy events could happen or, or, or something could go on. So sellers of these contracts would never sell people, uh, you know, based on intrinsic value alone. It's too obvious um, what's going to happen. You have to pay them a little extra to give them an, an incentive to sell you the contract. Otherwise, once again, they would never do it. So how do you calculate uh, extrinsic value? And extrinsic value is a combination of time decay also called theta decay. I'm going to talk about the Greeks related to options in a future video. I don't want to overload you uh, in this one, but just know that uh, extrinsic value is a combination of time and implied volatility. How volatile is this stock? How unpredictable is it? The more predictable, the, uh, the lower the premium because implied vol volatility will be lower. And the closer you are to the expiration date, the less you have to pay for, for, for theta. So when buying call contracts, intrinsic value is constant. Extrinsic value decays over time. The, the shaded blue boxes are in the money, meaning that the strike price is below the current stock price. And intrinsic value is constant. You know, if, it, if it's 104, uh, 104 minus 100 is four dollars. So there's there, there's 400 dollars worth of intrinsic value. So that difference <laughs> that difference has to be extrinsic. So out of the money options uh, have no intrinsic value. You would never exercise the contract. In the money options have both. They have both intrinsic and extrinsic. So these numbers you're seeing here for the out of money contracts. It's zero dollars for intrinsic value, and what you're seeing is purely extrinsic value. This is uh, time decay, and this is um, this is implied volatility. So now I got to tell you the problem. The problem with buying call contracts, and that is the break-even price. The strike price is not your break-even price. the The strike price is just money changing hands, but you have to factor in that premium. If you paid $6.65 per share, so $665 for total, for the right to uh, buy stock from this person at $100, your break-even point is, is actually uh, $106.65 because you paid $6.65 for the contract. So in order to uh, come out ahead net positive for buying this call contract, you need that stock price to go way up, way past 100. You need it to go to 106.65 just to get back to zero, just to overcome your cost for buying the contract in the first place.
Okay guys, I think that was a good primer for buying call contracts. Remember the buyer is paying the seller and uh, the, the, the price of the contract is both intrinsic and extrinsic value. Uh, it's a combination of both. We're gonna talk about Greeks in a later video to kind of more understand how it's calculated, but ultimately it is the, the free market design, deciding it. People can pay whatever they want for a contract. In my next video, we're gonna cover buying put contracts just so you can see a real world example of an option chain and what it looks like if you want to actually uh, buy a put contract. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, once again, check out that playlist down below for all my videos uh, in, in, in order uh, of how I think it should be taught. Uh, about trading options. This is a very complicated topic. I wish I could teach it in one video. It's just not possible. I hope you got something from this. If you have questions, leave me one down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until the next video, take care.